let's talk about the SNP because oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're not boring. No. And their Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, mm. he, he felt a little bit sorry for him because he was trying to make Even himself Even he made heard. a bit of a joke. Yeah, well, so he it was did. very noisy. Yeah. Uh, and then he said that he was hoped that everyone else had such a quiet Easter as he did. <laughs> Over the last Which was a good line, to be fair. It was a good line, to be fair. I mean, not the easiest uh, hand of cards he's been dealt. Uh, no. And, and then Richard that was Sinek a made a pretty bad joke about... Uh, he said, while well, you're distracted by that, we're going to motor on which we oh, think yeah. was a motorhome joke. But again, that's quite dense and you have to know the backstory yeah. to really find that chucklesome. Yeah. And I do know the backstory and I'm not laughing. No. Because I don't think... Do people call them motorhomes? It's a camper van, isn't it? Don't you call it a camper? Um, I don't know what you call it. I, I certainly don't aspire yeah. to own one. So, um, <laughs> but I do... I, I mean, it is... We, we are... We do live in interesting times and certainly uh, in the times today, uh, the, the suspicion is that the next person to be arrested mm. might well be the former First Minister. Which, if you think, if you go back to, uh, was it the beginning of April? No, end of March, when she announced she was resigning. It, I know exactly when it was, oddly, um, because it was round, it was the second week in February, I think. It was the half-term holiday, because yes. I was on holiday, you are. That's right, yeah. Because uh, everything happens when I go on holiday. Yeah. Um, so, what, literally two months ago, two months ago, Nicola Sturgeon was riding high as First Minister and we did, a, we did a feature on the show about how long she got and we were told we were mad to even ask the question. Mm. Then she was like, and now we're talking about, well, of course she's going to be arrested. I mean, it's, it's an astonishing speed yes. with which that this is unfolded. Uh, and Hum um, Yusuf must be wishing he'd never bothered throwing his hat in this particular ring. Well, uh, I think, isn't Kate Forbes on manoeuvres to try to um, suggest that he might like to... Step aside. Why would you want to do it now? Well, I suppose there might not be really... anything left. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> if she is on manoeuvres, she's not much of a tactician. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> Don't take advice from me. It's a very good point, Matt. You can tell why you're in but your no, job. But no, I mean, it is genuinely extraordinary. And I think the, the thing, the big unknown is what imp long term impact, however this pans out, clearly there's some short term damage. Nobody's been charged. So, no, you know, it might, not, it's possible that nothing happened. But there has clearly been a lot of bad headlines in the SNP. What this is doing in terms of Scottish politics is going to be absolutely fascinating. The Labour Party is on the up. The Lib Dems, we don't talk about them enough. Some people might D don't say. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if they start getting back into... Because they used to be a big political force in Scotland as well. If they mm. start getting back to Scotland, picking up some seats, and Labour start getting back as well. Henry Zephyr was talking about this on the show yesterday. You start getting into a place where if Keir Starmer... It's a huge ask for him to get a majority at the next election. But if he can get close enough and only have to rely on the Lib Dems and not the SNP, then that's, that's a yeah. really interesting place politically. But where do you go politically in Scotland if you are if you believe passionately in Scottish independence, and you are absolutely entitled yeah. to believe that, you can't vote for the SNP or you're wavering. Well, what, you, you, you haven't got a political home, have you? No, it's interesting. That, although what, I think the rev one of the interesting reverse things, we've tested... I think we're going to do another focus group in Scotland next week. But the last time we did one, we asked... SNP voters who are against another independence referendum. Because there were some people who liked the SNP, the way that, you know, they liked Nicola Sturgeon, they liked the way they she ran the country. She was a very effective operator. Exactly. Yeah. Without necessarily thinking we should have an independence referendum right now. And I suppose it's a bit like, if you went back 10, 15 years, people who didn't really like the EU, but that wasn't their most overriding for, you know, if an opportunity came to get along to get out of the EU, fine, but they mm. might have voted Conservative for other reasons rather than because that was necessarily a path out. But it's interesting how that uh, SNP block starts breaking up into don't knows, possibly going Labour, possibly going SNP, uh, Greens, you know, who are more committed to independence. But um, for us outsiders, it would seem that the damage has already been done. We can't unsee the images of the police tents and we can't unknow about the arrests. I yeah. know there are no charges, but long term, it's going the, the memories will linger, won't they? I think that's right. And the big, I think the big uh, damage, the sort of long term, you know, Yusuf, although a few of them are still left, quite a lot of the people who've run the SNP for a long time, who chalked up all these big wins... You know, Alex Salmond, then Nicola Sturgeon, Nicola Sturgeon's husband, uh, some of the spin doctors, director of communications, they've all gone. So you suddenly have this sort of, it's a bit like, uh, um, uh, like Keir Starmer, you know, coming in and so there's, there's no machinery, there's no machinery around mm. you. You know, oh, Ed, Ed Miliband, but his better example, when he took over as Labour leader, all the people who've been in government such a long time all cleared off. Um, and so you don't have a team of spin doctors, policy people, you know, Comms, whip, whips, all that sort of stuff. That, and then he's also got a party which is which is divided. You know, they're they're unhappy about 
progress and independence, on the trans question, mm. you know, and they're all, like you said, including um, Kate Forbes, are all, you know, shooting their mouths off. It's great for us. Well, it is. It's, it's certainly... That's a functioning democracy. And that's what a functioning democracy looks like, everybody. <laughs>